So the basic gist here is that my sex hormone binding globulin, which is a protein in the human blood, like albumin, that carries our sex hormones, has been elevated for a long time. And when I was on keto, my SHBG was in the 120s at one time. So low carb appears to raise SHBG. This is an argument that I've advanced in the past that is probably that ketogenic low carb diets are not great for sex hormones because when you have more SHBG, you're going to have less free hormones in your body. And so I was wondering why is my SHBG so high? I experimented with things like boron, didn't really change anything. And I'm not sure that's the right solution either. I think I'm getting plenty of boron in my diet. I stumbled upon this idea that perhaps my SHBG was elevated because perhaps I had a little bit too much iron in my blood. As I've talked about in the past, I don't have hemochromatosis. I don't have genes for hemochromatosis. I've shown my genes on previous podcasts, but I do seem to hold on to iron when I eat meat every day. And to be fair, this is a reason that some people may argue, Paul, isn't this an impetus to eat less red meat with all of this bioavailable heme iron? And I don't really think it is because here's the short answer. I think red meat, especially grass-fed red meat, is probably the most evolutionarily consistent food we could eat because it's fed the most ancestrally, evolutionarily consistent diet. Cows are fed grass throughout their lives, and that grass is what they're supposed to be eating. I don't really want to eat lower iron-containing chicken that is fed corn and soy and grains. If I eat the dark meat, I'm going to get a similar amount of heme iron as I am with red meat. If I eat darker pork, I'm going to get that, but both pork and chicken are fed corn and soy, and I don't want to eat those foods. I would rather eat red meat and then understand where my iron is and manage it. How do I manage it? Well, this may sound a little intense, but I've been doing phlebotomy. So this means I essentially drain a little bit of blood every week. And if you've heard my previous podcasts, what have I started doing? Yeah, I do my own blood draws. So every week I stick a needle in my vein, usually right there, and I drain out 50 to 60 cc's of blood, which I then give to that plant behind me, which is maybe why it looks so healthy. And as you can see, my ferritin, I'll show you the ferritin levels, have gone down significantly with that process. And interestingly, and this is really the first time that I'm able to share this on blood work, my SHBG has now also gone down to the lowest levels that I've had perhaps since I've been checking it in the last four to five years. So I really think that there is interesting evidence in the medical literature that subclinical iron overload may lead to levels of sex hormone binding globulin that are higher than we want to see it. So let's get into the details of all that and I'll show you guys how it all shakes out. So you can see here that on these most recent labs in March, 2023, my ferritin is now 87, previously 252. And before 252, it was above 300. So 300 doesn't really raise the alarm. You can see here that the reference interval for ferritin is 30 to 400 nanograms per ml, but for me, it seems that things are better in my physiology when my ferritin is a little lower. Perhaps my ancestors just didn't have quite as much access to red meat as I did, and so when they got iron, they wanted to really hold on to it because it's such a precious nutrient. Iron forms the center of every hemoglobin molecule in your body, which is the large complex of proteins in all of your red blood cells that carry oxygen. That's a pretty central thing for being a healthy human. So if you perhaps didn't have access to lots of iron in the past, half of my ancestry is Sicilian, then holding on to iron may have been a good thing. So I realized that as we move through time and space in 2023, we may do things differently than our ancestors had. And I'm trying to do that in the best way possible, eating the cleanest, most nutrient-rich foods, but also mitigating potential issues with um, genetics that may not be ideal. Now, hundreds of years ago, my ancestors might've been eating more fish. Maybe they were eating more land animals like chicken or pork, and they may have had less iron in their diets. If <laughs> those animals were not fed suboptimal foods, maybe that would be something that I could consider an experiment with. But I feel pretty darn good with meat and organs. I just do this phlebotomy to manage my ferritin. So it's an interesting thing. It's humbling for me to say, oh, I don't think this is a reason for humans not to eat good quality red meat, grass-fed, grass-finished, but I think it's something to know and you should check your iron stores. You can see here the whole iron panel you want is going to have the iron binding capacity, which is called the TIBC, uh, serum iron, and iron saturation, which is 35, previously 31. I've had that as high as almost 50 in the past. So you want that iron saturation below 40 for sure. You want that ferritin. I would say the ferritin can go even lower for me, probably 60 or 70 or even 50. And those are the main iron stores. Those are the main iron 
metrics that you want to get on your labs. You'll see here on the blood work that my B12 is out of the reference range, but this is a normal thing for me. And it happens for many humans who are eating red meat and organs, animal foods that has lots of B12. That's nothing to be concerned about. There is some association in the literature. There, there are some conditions where people have myeloid dysplasia or blood cancers that lead to elevated B12, but you can easily see on a CBC that I don't have any blood cancer. This is just an elevated storage amount of B12, which is completely safe from everything we know in medicine and not an issue. You can see my folate is 6.7, previously 15.7. Not sure why it's lower, but it's still within the reference range. And I am eating a little more liver now, which is good as you'll see later on my homocysteine. So we can also look then at my sex hormone binding globulin. SHBG is here, 50.2, previously 69.5 in November. So this is November to March with basically weekly phlebotomy, 50 to 60 cc's of blood, led to a drop in the SHBG probably between 69.5 and 50.2 with a ferritin that went down from 252 to 87. So I'll keep an eye on this, but I think that's really interesting. And obviously, this isn't a perfect experiment. There's no way I could blind myself, but I do think that I feel better with less iron. I feel better with probably a lower ferritin now, and perhaps the sex drive is a little better for me with less ferritin, though the testosterone has remained about the same. 